Hello everybody, this is So The Tiger with a, another video. Obviously this is not a solar power video, but this is a video about my new e-bike that I bought. It's a bit hard to see here because I am a bit short for space, but I will do the best I can. So this is the Rad Runner Plus from Rad Power e-bikes. And I bought this to use to go to work on. So I commute about 15 miles a day to and from work uh, over five or six days a week. And I normally go on the bus, And but there are times that it is better to be able to go whenever you want rather than when the buses run. So I bought this e-bike. Now I wanted to buy a good quality e-bike and I wanted one that was well constructed and looked solid and I watched videos on YouTube and looked on the internet and I came across Rad Power Bikes and I also wanted a road legal e-bike so this is what I bought. Now to be road legal an e-bike in the UK and in Europe we have similar rules but in the UK to be a legal e-bike it needs to have a motor with a maximum of 250 watts power and and using the motor assist pedal assist it must not enable you to travel at more than 15 and a half miles per hour whilst using the power of the motor now obviously if you want to go faster than 15 and a half miles per hour you are free to pedal to make up the difference but when you exceed 15 and a half miles an hour, the motor will cut out and all the pedaling is over to you. So, now bear in mind that as this is a fairly solidly built e-bike, that it's not light in weight. So when the motor cuts out and you have to start pedaling, you will know about it. Now this is the Rad Runner Plus. They make different models of e-bike and the main difference with this model as opposed to the normal Rad Runner, the not plus model, is that the plus model has gears and it has front suspension. So this bike has front suspension to help even out the bumps, but I'll come to that in a moment and in the back it has a Shimano 7 speed transmission it has gears and that's important as I'll come back to later so if I just give you a quick overview a bit tight for space here so I apologize if I bump the camera so in the back we have a 250 watt motor, it's a 48 volt motor and this is a geared motor. So it's made by a company called Bafang and they're quite a common make of motor. Also this bike has fat tyres, fat tyres. These tyres are 3.3 inches and they're on 20 inch rims. This bike has disc brakes, front and rear. These are mechanical disc brakes, i.e. they are cable operated. And the brake levers are on the handlebars. Uh, when you use the 
brakes, the motor automatically cuts out. And also, the, if I operate the brake, you see that this bike has a stop light, has a real, it has front and rear lights, and a built-in brake light. This bike does not have indicators, and it doesn't have a horn, but it does have a bell. It has a front light and it has a small mechanical bell. If I operate the bell. Okay. Uh, a horn would have probably been better, but this only has a bell. On the front there is a, a headlight. Now this is not the standard headlight for this model. This is actually the premium headlight and it costs an uh, additional uh, £45. You buy it as an, an accessory and then you swap out the standard headlight. So that's the light. I would take you around the front of the bike but obviously I'm a bit tight for space and I can't fit in here. So I have to make the best I can. So. It has uh, the handlebars, so, so it has leather Im imitation leather handlebar grips on both sides, and the seat underneath the cover is also the same colour, but I'll come back to the seat later. Uh, so on the handlebars we have a mode switch, you can't see very well here, let's put the light on, so there's a, there's a up, up, there's a down arrow, a up arrow and a mode button in the middle, you probably can't see all that well, there we go, so mode up and down controls, uh, this model comes with an LCD display and it shows the battery charge, an odometer, a speedometer, uh, a mode section, an uh, indicator for the headlight, a indicator for the pedal assist, the assist function, for the pedal assist function and the power that would be supplied to the motor in the mode that you're in. And as you saw, when you have the headlight on, the display is backlit. If you don't, if you turn the bike on and don't use it for a certain time, it then turns off. So that's the display. This is not standard on the Rad Runner model. It has a simpler display. You can buy this as an accessory. Uh, you can have the odometer display in miles or kilometers per hour. I bought it in the UK and it came set to kilometers as a, as a default, but you can change this. This model display is an SW900, I believe. It's used on different brands of e-bike and there are menus and you can change things in the menus there are plenty of going to that on the internet now it comes set as road legal so but you can change the settings on here and if you go online there are many guides on changing it so that's that so on the right hand side we have a gear change selector for the seven speed transmission and there is a half throttle here now the thing about throttles and the uk is that the throttle 
can only, on its own, can only move the brake at up to six kilometers per hour. The throttle is meant for helping you to pull away and when you're pushing the bike along then you can have up to six kilometers an hour of, of power from the motor to help you push the bike along to make up for its weight and this is useful if you're pushing it up a hill because it will help you and make it easier. The bike does not come with any mirrors and these are aftermarket and you know bought from eBay some Chinese ones and they had to be modified to fit on these handlebar grips which are not round they're sort of a strange shape and I had to do some modifications to fit the mirrors I have them folded in because this is rather a tight space that I'm in so, but mirrors can be useful to see what's coming up behind you. Although, basically, using your ears, they're probably just as good. So, that's those. Uh, as you can see here, the battery is fully charged. And so far, I've done 108 miles in total on this bike. So, okay. So in the front we have these uh, suspension forks. I guess they do take some bumps out of the road, but if the road surface gets bumpy, then you will know about it. You'll bounce a bit on it, and that's just how it is. This model being the Brad Runner Plus comes with Mud guards. We call them mud guards in the UK. In the US, they're called fenders or whatever else you'd like to call them. But in the UK, they become pre-fitted to the bike, and that's useful in wet conditions, as it helps to keep the spray off the road and try and help keep the bike in good order and to shield the electronics. So also, this is this bike uses a 48 volt battery. It has a capacity of 14 amp hours or 672 watt hours. And it has a switch built into the battery. The, you can lock the battery on the bike and you can turn the battery on and off. Now since the battery fits underneath the seat, it's not easy to remove, especially if you have the seat down very low, as I do, as I'm a bit of a short person. So I always keep the battery on the bike and I charge it on the bike. So. I mean, this bike is very sturdy, it's a utility bike. It's designed to uh, carry passengers, but I will come to that a bit later. Obviously, I don't want to carry any passengers, I don't have any children, and it's my vehicle to go to work. So, and I needed storage, so... I'm just going to turn the bike off now. So on the rear rack I have fitted a, literally fitted a storage box. And this is a heavy duty recycled storage box. Uh, this is a 24 litre box, it's a wham bam 24 litre box made of recycled plastic and I've attached it to the rack by bolting through the bottom using existing bolt holes. These bolt holes are actually provided to mount the passenger kit, accessory kit. Basically you have a long sort of bench seat that bolts onto the rack and then a pair of foot pegs that attach 
here, one on either side, they're folding foot pegs, and then you get plastic wheel guards that obviously stop your passenger from getting anything tangled in the rear wheel, uh, or if it's wet, stop spray getting onto them. But you can also, in place of the passenger kit, you can fit you can fit um, rear pannier bags. They clip onto this on both sides. They make rad ones. They make all sorts of accessories that you can fit to your bike. And they also make a, a large rear basket that bolts to these holes as well. But that was a bit expensive and I didn't want to buy that. It was just actually a and sort of open rack. I wanted something, well, more like a box. So I bought this box off of eBay. I don't know, it cost maybe around 10 pounds and it's bolted in place. It's going nowhere and it has a clip on lid. So I put my stuff in there, like my backpack and bicycle locks and other stuff that I carry. The bike also comes with a charger and it's important that you only use the supply charger or the rad battery. So it has some indicator lights on it, the charging and the power. So that's how it works. I think this is a two amp charger. So that's how that works. Uh, if I come to the seat, underneath this cover is a kind of triangular shaped seat. It's a bit of unusual, but the seat is pretty hard. It's a very stiff seat. There are no springs underneath the seat and the seat is non adjustable. It is bolted onto the seat post and that's the seat it comes with. Now, if you ride the bike for any length of time, then you'll find that it gets a bit uncomfortable. So a common upgrade is to replace the seat. Now, since the seat and the seat post are bolted together, you'll need to buy a replacement seat post. The seat post used on this bike is 27.2 millimeter diameter. So you buy a seat post and a separate saddle and then you put them together. Uh, some people also recommend using a suspension seat post. The only thing there is that if you have to have the seat right down like I do, then the additional height of the suspension seat post may make the saddle too high. So that's something to think about. Also, if you replace the seat and you do buy the passenger package, then if you have the seat right down, they might get in the way of each other. Uh, if you're fairly tall and you have the seat higher up, then that should not be an issue. Uh, so that's that about the seat. Uh, Rad also make a lot of accessories for their bikes and on the front there's a mounting point for a front rack it, or you can put a child seat there as well uh, they also sell a child seat that fits onto the rack as well if you want to carry children around so that's that I'll come more to about carrying passengers later. Uh, also, as you can see, I have the premium headlamp. That's an optional extra. The bike does come with a standard headlamp. It's a fair, quite a lot smaller. And as I have to ride the bike sometimes early in the morning and in the evening, then it gets dark and I ride this bike on a main road that goes into the country where there are no 
street lights. So a powerful light is essential. One to see where you're going, but also to make you more visible to cars. And since I ride this bike on a road with a 50 mile an hour speed limit, uh, I want to be as visible as possible. So that's why I, I upgraded the front light. So now in the center here, in the step through section, uh, Rad sell a center console that you can fit. It's like a enclosed container that you can put stuff in and on the top it has a drinks holder and a phone holder. It's not lockable but you can put stuff in it while you're riding on the bike. So it could be useful if you went to the shops and went to buy groceries or whatever then you can put your stuff in the centre console. The only thing about that is it then removes the step through feature of the back. I, it's low and easy to step over if you want to get onto the bike. So that's another thing I liked about it. Alright, so if we come to the rear rack, uh, the bike is designed to take to the rear passenger package and the rack is has a load rating so that you can actually carry adult passengers. Now, the thing I'll say about this is that Rad, Rad Power Bikes, sell different versions of this bike for different markets. Now, for the EU and the UK, because of the rules that we have that limit the power of your motor to 250 watts and a maximum speed of 15 and a half miles per hour makes this bike I would say underpowered for carrying passengers. 250 watts I would say is not enough to carry the weight of an adult person cycling and another adult sat on the back. I would say that the motor would not be powerful enough. The version of the bike they sell for the US market has a 750 watt motor in the back, i.e. it has three times the power. So if you have a 750 watt motor then I would say that yeah carrying passengers is viable but in the UK where you can only have a 250 watt motor, I would say that carrying adult passengers just isn't realistic. It just doesn't have enough power. So I would say this because on my journey to work, the roads are not completely level. I would say that if that you live somewhere where there were no hills and the roads were fairly level then you'd be great on this bike or on UK e-bikes in general but in an ideal world the roads are not level and especially in the UK we have hills now on my way to work there is a pretty steep 10% hill I, it's 1 in 10 and going to work is fine going down the hill great no problems there but on the return trip i have to go up this 10 percent hill and this bike is not lightweight and going up the hills you will definitely need the version well this the Rad Runner Plus that has the gears because to go up a 1 in 10 hill you will need the lowest gear the bike has and even then you'll have to put in a fair lot of effort to cycle up a hill. Now this hill's a pretty good one 
and by the time I get to the top of the hill I'm in the lowest gear and I'm doing about seven miles an hour and I have to put in a lot of effort to take me alone and the bike up the said 10% hill. If I had someone sat on the back of it, I would never make it. So, carrying passengers and going up hills uh, with the UK limit of 250 watts for the motor, I would say is a no-no. I would say for any bike in the UK with the 250 watt motor, then if you could, I would say it'd be okay to carry small children on the back anywhere where the terrain was level and there were no hills. So, you know, taking your kids on the school run, yeah, that's feasible, but carrying teenagers or adults and going up any kind of hill, I would say is a no-no. So carrying adult passengers, yeah, okay for the US version with the 750 watt motor. Then I would say, yeah, that's fine. And also, because of the EU and UK rules, yes, this bike has a throttle, but the throttle only works up to six kilometers per hour. And as I said, it's mainly to assist you when pulling away from the traffic lights or pulling away in general. And if you're walking the bike along the, the pavement or having to push it up a hill, then that's what the throttle is for. You cannot ride on just the throttle alone, which is another thing about the US models. The throttle works all the time. You can ride with just the throttle and no pedaling. And in the US, I think the speed limit is about 20 miles per hour. So yes, we have to put up with inferior rules to the US. And that's how that works. So, so, this is the Rad Runner Plus. Uh, a couple of days ago I had an email from Rad saying they've just released the Rad Runner Plus 3. It has some differences in the frame and it comes with hydraulic brakes rather than cable operated mechanical brakes. Which if you're carrying heavy goods or passengers, offers better braking. But as I said, you probably wouldn't want to carry passengers on this UK model because the motor lacks power. So I would say that carrying very small children is probably feasible and probably only if you're riding on the level, i.e. around town around the city city centre. If you're going out in the country or you have steep hills, I would probably keep away from passengers altogether. So, so when it comes to riding the bike, and as I said, the pedal assist, where you turn the pedals and the percentage more percentage of the power comes from the motor, it's adjustable in uh, five steps all the way up to 250 watts so and that's obviously indicated on the display so what I found riding this bike is that the ideal speed to ride at is about 15 miles per hour at that rate the motor will keep assisting you as it's under the 15 and a half mile an hour limit and using the gears you'll be in I would be in fifth gear 
uh, turning the pedals at a reasonable rate and I'll be traveling at about 15.2 miles an hour and that's the optimum speed if you go over 15 and a half miles per hour the motor cuts out and then you're left pedaling and bear in mind the bike is solidly built so you'll know that you're having to pedal also if if you're pedaling along and so i.e. if you're pedaling along and then you go down a slope or a hill and you go over the 15 and a half miles an hour the motor cuts out and you'll be sort of coasting down the hill and by the time you get to the other side and you have to go up the hill on the other side what you'll find is the motor takes a fair while to kick in once you got below the 15 and a half miles an hour and when you get to the other side of the slopes i.e. you go in down the hill you get to the bottom and then it starts going up the other side as you'll be coasting down the hill you'll gather speed and then you'll get to the bottom and obviously you're still going faster than the cutting of the motor and then when you start going up the other side you'll be slowing down slowing down slowing down going way under the 15 miles an hour slowing down slowing down and you'll be starting to go up the other side and you'll still be waiting for the motor to cut in which means you'll have to change right down to a very low gear to start going up the other side before the motor decides to cut back in so that's just something you have to get used to that if you're cycling on the road you exceed the 15 and a half miles an hour the motor cuts out quickly and then as you carry on going and you slow down because obviously the motor's not pushing you anymore and then You'll slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, and then you'll be waiting for the motor to cut back in again. So, but I guess that's just how the pedal assist works, and you have to get used to it. So, this is Solar Tiger with a video about the Rad Runner Plus, 2 Plus. Now, in the back here, I have a 24 litre storage box. That's just my solution for carrying cargo. So inside this box, I have my backpack when I go to work. I have two bicycle locks and I have a rain cover. Now, if you ride this to work, obviously when you get to work, you need to lock it up to prevent theft. So I bought a heavy duty chain chain lock from oxford they make bicycle and motorbike stuff and it has 10 millimeter links in it so it is quite heavy but i wanted it to be heavy duty and i lock it up to some railings and i also put a rain cover on it one to keep the rain off and also to partly hide my bike to make it less obvious of what it is so and also when you ride your bike I recommend for safety that you wear a helmet and you wear high-vis clothing which I do and it's also advisable to wear gloves because even at 15 miles an hour uh, you do get the wind chill on you as you ride along the road. Now 15 miles an hour doesn't sound much but the cold wind blows on you at that speed and also just while I'm saying that in the UK this is classed as a pedal bike like any other bike on the road so there's no need for tax no need for insurance you do not need a driving license and the vehicle doesn't need any registration. I, in the UK, as long as it's a legal e-bike, 
there is no need for a number plate and you only have to be over 14 so you have to be 14 years or over to ride this on the road so no tax no insurance no license and as long as you're over 14 years old so oh and the price of the bike was 1749 UK pounds I ordered the bike and Rad delivered it three days later I had read online people waiting many months to receive their bike but mine was delivered three days after ordering so that was in the UK so I thought that was good customer service uh, I did have issues with the tracking number so I wasn't ready when it turned up it turned up before I actually knew it was coming but I managed to rearrange the delivery with the delivery company in this case Rad used UPS as a delivery company and they came back the next day and I had my bike so oh the Rad charged 50 pounds in the UK for delivery so that's that so I apologize about this video as I keep the bike in my hallway and it's a bit tight for space in the hallway which is not ideal for trying to film the video but I apologize for that and that is how it is so this is Solar Tiger with a video on my Rad Runner Plus UK version e-bike if you like what you see please like the video if you have any questions suggestions or anything else then please leave a comment below please try to leave a constructive comment any sarcastic type comments will just be ignored that's just how I deal with them so if you have any genuine questions or suggestions then please leave them below and then until next time this is Solar Tiger saying thank you for watching Goodbye.